Hello everyone and welcome to the She Plays to Win New Year's Blitz Tournament. A very exciting morning of three plus two Blitz chess lined up. And uh, here is Lauren DeCosta, the brains behind She Plays to Win. Hi Natasha, morning. Morning. Happy New Year, should I say it now? Or? Happy New Year, Winter. nearly, yes, yes. And uh, we're also joined by Alicia. Hello. Hi Alicia. Hello. So um, if I could just talk a little bit about She Plays to Win, if that's all right, Natasha. Yes, um, So She Plays to Win is a UK girls chess project, which I set up in April 2020. Um, actually, I had girls like Alicia in mind when I set up, but we'll come to that in just a moment. And uh, we have nearly 900 girls across the UK signed up from all parts of the UK. Uh, we're doing lots of events, uh, both online and in person. Obviously, with COVID, we started online, but now we're trying to... Uh, move things uh, well, quite a few of the events that we're doing uh, in person but yeah this uh, she, this online fundraiser tournament we sort of experimented with last year this time last year and it went really well we had 65 players last year so I'm hoping that we can beat it this year now uh, a number of people said they could play officially we're up to 49 oh um, 49 think... that's gone up by 10 since about five minutes ago so that's really good <laughs> oh good um well I think a lot more actually said they could play I mean probably even up to 70. So I'm hoping we can beat 65. Wow. So for those who are listening who had signed up, please join now because we need to beat 65. <laughs> um, Alicia, have you already signed in to the tournament? Uh, I haven't actually signed in. I need to actually sign in. Ah, okay. Are you one of those um, who like to keep it keep your powder dry to the, before the tournament so no one can prepare for you? Yeah. They might prep. You never know. If you sign up <laughs> 10 minutes early, they might yeah. have looked up all your moves in the database. <laughs> Although I noticed Alicia's brother signed in, so he doesn't mind. No, he was telling me the same thing. He only signed in like probably like a minute ago, to be honest as well. He was, right, like, right. In the tournament yesterday, but he only signed in like a minute ago. Okay. So how long Absolutely. have you been playing chess, Alicia? Uh, I've been playing since I was six years old. Oh, and wow. um, Mr. DeCosta has been my coach from like the very beginning. And oh, I started nice. playing at school at NLCS um, because yeah. our school offered chess lessons, which is I think something which is quite uncommon. Yeah, and yeah, been playing ever since. Very nice. So obviously, Alicia, we as, as she said, we've known each other since she was about six years old. Um, did you like it immediately, or do you think it was something that you grew into over a little bit of time? Um, I think I liked it immediately. Actually, I mean, like just like as soon as I started playing, I was like really invested in like the kind of like idea of the game and the fact that it requires like so much like because I was quite a logical person, so. Mm. Fact that it requires so much like strategic thinking and like prophylaxis, prophylaxis and like thinking ahead was something that like really drew me into the game. Yeah. Okay. And what about uh, fast chess and slow chess? I mean, this morning is going to be action packed three plus two, pretty fast. <laughs> are you are you feeling ready for some fast chess? Yeah, I actually really like blitz. I think like it's something which I wasn't very good at a while ago, but I've been playing quite a lot and I play like bullet a lot on light chess as well. Um, and it's, I think really it's, like really, yeah, it's really fun as well and it's like a good way to test your theory as well like a fast pace it's one of those uh <clears throat> one of the young generation natasha where they had fed a diet of blitz and bullet chess um, mm -hmm. and in fact I, my next question to alicia was um a lot of girls in particular i found were, were completely turned off with online chess um especially with the pandemic and the, being forced to, to come off the board and play online but you were one of the ones that actually were the other way and you improved immensely by playing about probably thousands of games online. Um, so what's your take on over the board chess compared to online chess? Well, I think that like over the board chess, so obviously online chess has offered like a really, really good like alternative like during COVID and during the pandemic. But I think like ultimately I definitely prefer over the board chess because it kind of gives you that like added benefit of like actually going face to face playing them and then like you get to make lots of new friends as well and like lots of new mm. connections which is i think like a really important part of playing chess as well um but i think that online chess has been like a really good alternative and it's brought like a lot more people as well to play chess because it's a lot more accessible oh good um and natasha you probably done this but a few years ago uh alicia played in the european under 12 girls championships uh, which was i think quite a significant milestone for any chess player to yeah. to, to be selected to play for their country um, what was your experience like there, Alicia? Did you really enjoy it? Did, yeah, that was really enjoyable. Definitely. Where did you? Was that in person? Where did it you go? In, yeah, it was in Latvia. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, wonderful. so it was like um, 
it was like a really really nice community of people because the chess team was like really nice there and I remember there was like one evening where we were just like sitting out in an outdoor restaurant kind of like eating dinner and then just like playing chess at the same time and then like a few people from our team just came along and just like came along for a game and it was like a really nice atmosphere oh living the <laughs> chess dream yeah <laughs> morning Stambad Stambad's in the chat Oh, uh, he's playing as well. And another dangerous young youth to watch out for. Um, so for those who don't know, you've probably heard Alicia and Stanley, two of the, the young juniors. And I think we sh we have Keith Grandmaster Keith Arkell, who is many time English champion. Um, yeah, look, watch out for Keith Arkell's end games. That's my advice for everybody. <laughs> so, oh, we're up to 56, by the way. So oh, we need wonderful. nine more with six nine left. Nine more to beat the record. Nine more to beat the record. Yeah. Can I, is this a good moment to say about some extra prizes? Um, yes, Natasha, yeah. Yes. So, so, so there's going to be three extra prizes. Uh, so in your games, if you try and play either a good ending, a good attack, or a good Zvishenzug, um, there are prizes for each of them. You need to enter, though. You need to send your games in, say which games it is. Um, Alicia, do you know what a Zvishenzug is? No. No, it's like an in-between move. So if, if you if the automatic say someone takes something and the automatic move would be to retake it. If you do something else in between, that's even stronger and then come back oh, and okay, do that. A sort of in-between move. If you do any good ones of those in your games, um, enter your game and uh, Lauren or, and, and me will help judge uh, who wins the prizes. So a good end game, a good attack or a good fish and zook. Yeah, we'll be looking at a lot of the games, won't we, Natasha? But we if will. there are 57 now, I think, in the tournament, we won't wow. be able to see apps or 58 where we won't be able to see absolutely everybody's games. So yeah, do send in uh, yeah. if you think you've played a, was it a good attack, a good, a good attack, zoom? a good end game, a good, good suspicion game. zoom. And can Keith Arkel win the end game prize? Cause he's, he can, if favorite. he plays a good end game. Okay. That's... Plays a good end game. So it is the Pope Catholic. But, 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 but we do adjust a bit for like playing strength. So if you right. don't have to play an end game, better than Keith Arkles to be eligible for that prize. So we'll, we'll take into account people's strength uh, when we're judging it. Um, I've got a question for Alicia. Um, what sort of goals do you think you have in chess? I mean, would you like to be like the Tasha like Women International Master or, or even more? What do you think? Um, well, I think I want to be a WGM, so a woman grandmaster. Right, um, good. But yeah, I mean, like, obviously, I'm going to have to like balance that with like my studies, and, like going to university and everything. But like, I think it is something that I want to commit to, definitely, in the future. That's what we like to hear at She Plays Through, girls like this, <laughs> yeah. um, talking ambitiously about their chess. Uh, and actually, yesterday, I went to visit the London Junior Chess Championships, for, for those who don't know this. Oh, yes. One of the major junior events in the uh, junior chess circuit. It's been around for, I think, 1924, so it might be nearly 100 years now. And uh, yeah, I spoke to quite a few of the parents and, and girls who are uh, a little bit younger than Alicia, but they're very keen to also have ambitions in chess. So. It's really nice to hear, and, I, and, and she plays to win is there to try and help boost the girls uh, by forming a sort of community and offering sort of trainings, uh, both live and in person tournaments. And we've got an exciting uh, events that we've got planned in 2023. The first one is 26th of February, which some of you can qualify for, um, the girls only, fortunately, is um, we've got a simultaneous exhibition from Harriet Hunt and Susan Malich, who are both five time English women's champion. And they are going to do a simultaneous in West London for 30 special girls who are going to be invited. So I believe that three of the girls today can win a place in that tournament. So for any girls like Alicia who uh, are participating in, in four minutes time, you can win uh, a coveted spot in that uh, extra uh, special simultaneous. And the other one is I can announce that on the 25th of June, Sunday, I also have it in West London uh, is going to be the She Plays to Win flagship tournament. So I think we have space for 120 girls and we're going to do a massive yearly tournament and get that in the calendar as a yearly thing to do. So all the money raised uh, from your kind donations from today's tournament goes to help us do these these events and uh, and fund these events for the girls of all ages and levels. So thank you everybody for for donating and taking part today. Uh, we're going to let Alicia go because she's only yeah. got three minutes till she plays. Alicia, how you do that? If you just close the tab, you're on. That will yeah, yeah, let you out. And... Brilliant. And okay. Alicia. Thanks. Well, we've got 60 players. Good luck, Alicia. Uh, we Good have 60 luck, players, and Thank I think Alicia might be 61, Natasha, so we might need four yeah. more people okay. to, uh, to sign up. Fine. Okay, okay. thanks a lot, Alicia. Good luck. Good and luck, Alicia, and... On your games. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye.
Good luck, Alicia. So, Natasha, as we said, we've got uh, 60, yeah. And I think 60, Alicia should that's, join. That's a new record then? Not quite, because we had 65 no. last time. 65, okay, we need another five players. Another five. Right. Well, Alicia should join, so that should make it with just four needed. Four players left to get to us. Two 65. minutes left. <sighs> okay. Who can, who can sign in? Uh, and can people join? Say they just thought about it during round one. Can they still join, or is that uh, one point? Well, I, I suppose they can um, if they were to sign up via the the contact form that we gave. Then I'm sure we could do yep. that. Although it'd be better if they played all seven games and they had a chance to the prizes. Yes. But that's okay. I think you can join halfway through. Just contact us. Um, is there a chat somewhere to put the link? Or... Yes, I, I can. It's on my other machine, so I just have to do something clever. Okay. Um, fine, it's I'll do that for a minute. So you talk. Uh, on the Sheep Place to Win website, there is a, on the top right, it says contact. So if you send uh, your form on that, then you'll be able to, I'll be able to see that, and then you can be added to the tournament. So we have just not even right. two minutes. Now, one minute to go. We have 62 <laughs> players. So oh, we're wow. so close to last year's inaugural record of okay. one tournament. Okay, two more players 65. we need. So if you're if you're Mer morning Mary Hatman, I know you're playing, so that's very very good. Um, if anyone is there watching you, um, it can be any. It's completely open tournament. So if you fancy having a go, do just pop in. Juniors, seniors, all fine. Male players, female players, all fine. So anybody at all can play. I'm sort of multitasking here by. Yeah, same. Something. I'm just also trying to admit any last minute people. <laughs> Um, some of which are desperately trying to get into our tournament. Oh, yeah. we've got 65. 65, oh. excellent. One more and, to beat the records. And Grandmaster, former British champion, Jim Plaskett, has literally added himself 25 seconds Lovely. before the tournament. This is anti-preparation. He didn't want anyone to know. No. So we've got eight seconds till the tournament starts. Let's see oh who my can gosh. add them. 66, we've got it, Natasha, we've made it. Oh, congratulations. Well done. I, Thanks I everybody for joining. We really appreciate it. By one uh, person. Fantastic. By one person, that's fine. That means we can beat it again next year. And it's, that's brilliant. Maybe 67 next year. Yeah. Okay. okay now, uh, Natasha, do you have to share the screen or? Uh, yep. Yeah, uh, let me get that. Let me get the screen on. There we go. Um, okay. That you should see that now. Can you see that, Lauren? I can. Although, if we can get to to the games, that would be good. The games. So I think we have to click on the people. So. If we, uh, let's, there you go, there's one. Oh, Jim Plaskett against Kitty J. Right, yeah. Um, so, as we just said, Grandmaster Jim Plaskett, I think, was he British champion in 1976, something like this? Um, um, he was British champion. I don't remember which year. But... Many, many years ago. And he's shown that he's he's had his morning cup of coffee because he's spotted Bishop takes F7 in this position. Yeah, so I did. Oh, if that takes, then we've got a knight check i feel it's a little bit unfair because jim i think jim lives in spain so this is 11 o'clock for him so he's had an extra oh, hour's true. sleep hasn't that he that's true that's true which is very unfair i think natasha because yes everyone in england has already had to get up a little bit earlier than him and uh and jim showing his his he's had his morning coffee yeah we expect a strong start from grandmaster jim pascal yeah jim, jim actually did very well last year he he was kind enough to play the inaugural one um, unfortunately, he lost to international master Tom Rendell, who I've known since I was oh. a junior, uh, in an epic game. Um, and uh, Jim probably wants to to win the title this time because he didn't win it last time. Unfortunately, Tom was unable to defend his title, um, which is which is such as it is. He let oh, someone else. He's got to be in it to win it. He's he's going to miss out this year, but <laughs> he'll be back. He'll be back. So Kitty uh, is is uh, Catherine, I think her name is. Is someone I've never met. And this is kind of one of the things that actually will happen with with she plays to win which is yeah they've all signed up online and they've played in all our tournaments but they've never met me or vice versa so now yeah. when we start to do live tournaments hopefully they can start to meet me and uh and get involved. oh it's fantastic yeah. isn't it yeah 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 it's really nice isn't it meeting someone you you know online um and then finally meeting them in person yeah yesterday it was, I had was loads with, the, with the people like i was commentating on during um pandemic and um uh, and I'm, I'm thinking standbad i did a commentary with standbad um before i'd ever even met him and then and then saw him at junior tournament it was funny <laughs> and lots of the other players so, yeah how did it feel though meeting him in person uh having already met him online 
Yeah, no, it's great. It's great. It's really funny. Yeah. I so suppose that's the way it has been, right? For COVID, yeah. we, we, we've yeah. just got to adjust it now back to reality, if you want to call reality it. Reality being actually meeting people. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully females like Kitty, when they'll start coming to, to, to the Shippe store and tournaments that we do, yeah. Yeah, the ones I mentioned, and then, yeah, can all acquaint ourselves together. Yes. Now, what I didn't ask you before the stream is how do you want to do it? Do you want to pop through different games or stick with one? Yeah, I like to sort of go around a little bit. If Let's that's go around right. a little bit. Okay, so we'll leave Kitty and Jim. Kitty's um, actually recovering well, I think, from, from having that Bishop F7 happen. Um, but it's going to be a little bit tricky with them. Um, with down sort to of open files against a king. So let's see what happens here. But we're going to just um, pop around back to the tournament and see a mixture of games. Yeah. Uh, Do you want to go to the, um, the third? Um, where's he gone now? It was uh, number nine, Jacob Dalla. Yeah. So can you, you see can number see ten. He's gone down number ten. So he's playing Rafe. Oh, here we go. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of an example of this tournament, which is uh, Rafe is someone that Natasha and I know very well. Yes. Uh, I met Rafe in the London Junior Under 12s in 1997, something like this, I can't remember, wow. a long time ago. Um, so I've known him for a long time. And now Jacob is one of my pupils at, uh, in one of my schools. So the fact that they're now meeting together to play. Jacob's uh, being pinned. Kind of nice. yes. Jacob was doing OK there, but yeah, he got his king caught on D8, didn't he? Yes. Um, but Jacob's a bit of a bit of a young blitz specialist, although not today, not in this first game against a much higher rated player. But uh, yeah, Jacob, very typical junior. He 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 doesn't get phased by losing, and he often comes back quite strongly. So I expect that from him there. But a good experience there for for him to play uh, feeding master Rafe Martin. Right. I'm going to pick one at random unless you shout. I like the name Omega Buster. <laughs> 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 playing oh, and he's playing Peter. Peter Sarri. Yeah, and Peter, Peter. is another of our um, teammates from Barbican, Lauren. That's right. And Peter was a late entrant. But P Peter's basically everywhere on the chess circuit, isn't he? Yes. So I wasn't surprised to receive his uh, uh, request to join this tournament because, yeah, Peter is literally everywhere. I think Peter might well be one of the most active players on, on the circuit, right? Would you? Yes. Yes, yeah. he is. Um, Which is great to see. Uh, now, it's slightly could... difficult for Black that this bishop's kind of cutting off here. So Black can't castle right this second. Do you think, um, from judging from the position that Black played the um, England Gambit, <laughs> E4, E5? It looks like it because it looks can, like he played... Just whiz it to the start. Yeah, there you go. See, yes. This is the problem, Natasha, of teaching all these kids because they all started watching all the videos by Eric, Eric Rosen and Levy Rosman. Yes. And all the yes. other players who who suggested the, all these crazy gambits and the we, we talked to, to Alicia didn't we earlier about the the yes. diet of playing online chess but actually a lot of them is the videos they've they've watched um, of all these gambits, <laughs> mm. which I think is fine too, isn't it? It's quite a good idea probably to try out these gambits from time to time, but um, but have some sensible stuff in your repertoire as well. It's usually a good idea. Although I can say that, that. I, still, I still play Gambit, so I can't really say it too strongly. Maybe this is where I should tell everybody that you beat me uh, when I was a junior playing the Morrow Gambit. I did, yeah. So, so Natasha is well versed in how to how to Gambit. <laughs> what do you say? Takes one to know one or something. Yeah. Takes one to know one, exactly. So now this is looking good for white now because mm -hmm. of that, that uh, extra piece and the positive. I think Omega, Omega Buster is uh, another young young junior. Another young player. Excellent to see you, Omega Buster. Okay. We know okay. what Black will be angling for, some kind of background meet. And there we go. Peter is very sensible. Peter's aware of this. Yes. Give, some, give some square for his king. So that. He's not going to fall for that, is he? D7 is a clever move. Taken, can it? Yeah. Well, he was hoping for bishop takes d7 and rook d5 pinning. Ah, uh, right. Um, but it's a sensible thing, by the way, uh, if you're well ahead on material, it's just to swap off everything. So yeah. expect knight d4 here. Yeah. Or, yeah, knight e5. Basically, he played d7 to swap off black's remaining rook, and that left black with just the bishop. Yeah, knight f8 check. 
Side of eight. And five G four F. Really much all over. Okay, we trust Peter to win this one. So let's have a look at. It's very trustworthy. Trusting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Right. We had quite, quite a lot of winners in the first game. Let's see who might have caused an upset, Natasha, because I'm just wondering if anyone yes. managed to do it. Okay. It looks like all the top seeds did win. Top seeds have been winning. There's the Gringolard Rose Moon. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I, actually, how do I find just the. See, there's a couple of games still going. Let's. How about this one? It's still playing. Yeah. Um, Oscar, Oscar Durham. Durham and Caleb C. Okay. Yeah. Again, Oscar, one of my pupils. He's doing pretty well because he's playing a much higher rate of play. He's, he's yes. fighting hard here. Oh, he's just mm -hmm. lost his mm -hmm. night. Commentator's curse. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing really well. We jinxed him. Uh, we jinxed yeah. him. Okay. Sorry, I shouldn't have come to that game. Um, I think Smashing Lad might still be playing. And he's, uh, so there's only two games left. Yeah. Should we wait to just see? Do you know this? A way to just see which ones are left. This is here we are. This is it. Smashing Lad. Yeah, oh, just lad. finished with okay. a checkmate by Smashing Lad. Yeah, so Smashing Lad is a friend of mine who we just came back two weeks ago from Poland from the European Rapid and Blitz Championship. So, yeah, someone who, well, he reminds me, Natasha, that he beat me like you did. He beat me when I was nine years old. Okay. He won't, oh, he won't let it go. So. No, I do. No, no reason to let it I go. Okay, round two is starting. Shall we see Atomrod? Okay. Okay. So everybody finished. Yeah. Yeah, everyone um, finished. Yes, round two. This is round two now. Um, okay. BK Alicia. Ah, oh, she's Alicia's playing Keith. Ah, oh, it's Alicia. Of course, it's Alicia who we just spoke to. Okay, I, we've warned her, didn't we? We warned her about Keith's end games. Yeah. So uh, Alicia learned the King's Indian from her her coach, who's sitting right here. No, I don't know. Yes. Pro okay. So you know, what, you know what to expect now. But we also know what Keith's repertoire is. So I wonder. I wonder what she plays. Do. So Keith likes, he always likes swapping a C pawn for a D pawn, right? But she, Alicia hasn't allowed him to do that. So that's good. He hasn't got his setup that he really likes. Yeah, this E5 move has come into practice quite a lot recently. Um, it wasn't covered by Boris Avrik in his Grandmaster repertoire book about 10 years ago, or at least wasn't really sort of taken seriously. So now Black should get yeah, Bishop E6. And Keith goes Knight D5, which is, I think, a bit surprising because you either go Queen A4. Or you swap queens, uh, the knight d2. So what do we just take this knight off, or what do we do now? Um, knight d5. It's what if black goes? You're e out of your theory, Lauren. <laughs> Does black go e4 here? Okay, because this just loses a. Does it lose a pawn here? Bishop takes f6. Yeah, and you takes have to. Bishop pawn. takes really, don't you? Oh no, you could fish and zoog with them. Um... With queen takes queen, could oh no, well, it's it's check. Check. <laughs> we've lost you're just trying to get a swish and zig in. I am, you, I want to get the swish and zigs in. A reminder that Natasha's offering a prize for the best swish and zig, so I'm not sure if queen takes d1 would be the front runner. It, it, it can't so. because it's illegal. But maybe that maybe black has best legal swish and zig is what we're offering. A prize <laughs> it's <for>. best legal. <laughs> you should have stipulated the rules, Natasha. Yeah, we had to get the rules better there. But maybe black has conversation because bishop takes e4 and then also e4 attacking. The B2 pawn is, is coming. But if anyone can get out of it, Keith can. And Queen C1 is a very sensible move. He's just trying to. So I think Black should go E4 and then Knight E4. B4. And then, oh, yes. And actually, e4, and then these two, kinda, they're quite nice, aren't they? Yeah, I think Black has conversation, but it, it depends on whether E4, Knight D2, Knight D4 is good because of Rook E1. And... So E4, Knight, Knight D2, Knight D4. Knight D4. Okay, attacking the e2 point. Trying to take this one. And if rook e1, bishop g4 looks interesting. Rook e1, bishop g4. Oh, yes. Lots of activity there for black. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, is it how good is that? Okay, I think Alicia just played a sensible move. Well, Do you think sometimes really people can be a bit overawed, Natasha, yeah. when you're playing a GM? Sorry? You can be overawed. Yeah, just like really she, against me, be. she would have played e4, but I think. Yeah. Yeah. Or against someone of her level, she would have just played e4, but I think now. I mean, still e4 looks quite interesting here. Yeah, let's still go for e4. Or can she take on g5 and then take on c4? I don't know. That was ah. interesting. Because if queen takes c4, then queen takes g5. Takes. Yeah, and here's. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. 
I think she should have played e4 on the, the, uh, instead of queen e7. But she can still do um, bishop c4, can't she? And then take on g4. Um, oh, no, and then white takes on e4 at the white end. White takes on e4. Yes, yeah, still, this is not this is not clear. It's all not clear. Because now, right, you could... <laughs> I want her to play... No, I maybe don't. I think it's... Not a decent session. Like e3s and stuff. <laughs> Well, G G four might be played at some point. Yes. Ah, oh, this one. Oh, look, nasty threat. Yeah, she's fighting hard here. This is. She this is... is because actually, can you? You can go. I'm looking like e three and then rook knight c two at the end to take on. So what about e three g four. E three oh. g four. And there's a pin on the queen to the queen. Oh, that could be nasty. I don't know. E3, G4, Knight, C2. Okay, she just played the safe move again. I think you're right, though. There seemed to be a lot of interesting play there for Black. Yeah. Now Black's threatening this one, which Keith sees. Of course he does. He's a grandmaster, and of course he sees it. Yeah. Interesting he didn't want to take on C7, though, with the Queen. Yeah. But he likes to control things, doesn't he? He's very, he does. He does. He's happy with his loot. He just took one pawn, so yeah. What about e three though? Yeah, black should be black should be trying to go e three here. But it's still not clear because white can't get control of the d file with rook d one. Yeah. So it's still not absolutely obvious that white. Of course, all Keith wants to do is swap the queens off and go into an end game, doesn't he? That's how he plays it. I'm sure that's what he'll do. So, so king g7, h5, f6 or something? Yeah, she should have played king g7 to go f6 there. Yeah. Because now he'll take with check, yeah. But still, still, she's... He's not going for an endgame. I'm completely wrong. He's going for an attack. He must have heard your memo about the, the prize for the best attack. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's going for all three prizes in one game. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is that possible? <laughs> I suppose it's hard to do the best attack and the best end game. So whilst you're fo focusing on that, maybe I can mention a few of the other people mm. in the tournament. Um, we have... Um, okay, so a couple of couple of people on two out of two. There's That's one girl, like, if I could just mention, uh, Natasha, there was a fantastic yeah. performance yesterday by one of England's juniors. She played in the, so I mentioned the London juniors, there was the adult mm -hmm. version or the, the open tournament, um, the London yes. Christmas Congress, which finished yesterday. And there was the, the open, the, the major, the minor, and the player in fifth position at the moment, the Curious Parrot, her name is mm. uh, Rakaya. Ah, Curious Parrot, yes. Yeah, she, she won the major tournament with oh, six fantastic. out of six. And she was wow. seeded 22nd out of 20, 27 players. Oh, my goodness. And she made wow. a 2460 performance because she won every no. game. And she was beating 18, 1900 players way above her rating. And she gained 189 ELO points. So this is the sort of performance that oh, you know, we have to stand up and take note because... Yes. Is she playing um, today? She is. She's on two out of two. Ah, right. So, so she, if you look at the standings, Natasha, you'll see... Uh, yes. The oh, there we go. Parrot. Curious Parrot, I see. Yeah. Well, so we'll, we'll need to watch her next game. Um, so yeah, who's she played so far? Oh, she beat Rafe. No way, right? Well, okay. you know she's on form. She's on form. So okay. maybe you might want to check that game out. Let's have a look at this one. Shall we have a look? Right. Well, I did. I did. We did warn these these adults about the dangerous juniors, but yeah, this, girl yeah. is in, this girl is in real form at the moment. Okay, so Shuka uh, Pianissimo, Rafe played it very sensibly. I think he can't complain here, can he? The curious parrot's white here. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh! That's oh my mistake. goodness. That's oh a my mistake goodness. from Rafe. Checkmate. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> well done, curious. Does that count parrot. as the best attack? <laughs> well, I don't know. See, so see, see what entries we get. That that could be an entry. That's for sure. <laughs> right. So, that, so she's definitely one to to watch out for. Um, yes. Okay. Let's. In this tournament, because as I said, of her form from from uh, from the weekend. Yeah, and so also we have um, if I... it's on two out of two. Cami, Cami is on two out of two. Yes, yeah, so we had a couple of uh, foreign women international masters who have kindly offered to play today. Uh, Cami three is Camilia Chobanu, I think if I say her name right. So Cami was um, was 
I think back in June we had a a, a training session on online for She Plays to Win, and mm. Cami uh, joined Elizabeth Pets to do the. Um, so Elizabeth did the the oh, elite lovely. group, yeah. and Cami did the sort of other group. And we had about sixty girls who came to listen to Cami do a training session, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, Wonderful. And so the idea of She Plays to Win is, is whilst it's a UK girls chess project, is to connect the top girls of all countries and yes. sort of and I think just get them inspired like what you're doing Natasha you know female strong female players sort of get mm. you to come and meet the girls and then they can be inspired by you mm. so Cami and the other girl is um I think her name is Khadija Latrech uh okay. from Algeria and she is the other woman international master playing here so she's another one who's a coach uh, both Cami and, and Khadija are chess coaches so if any girls are looking for a coach uh, you, I can recommend these two girls because of the, of the female inspiration. Uh, how did she's still playing her second game actually, Khadija? And they would contact them via you, Lauren, or how? Yeah, absolutely. They can just uh, write to me and say, "Oh, we're looking for a coach." So any girls who are looking for a a coach and, and particularly would like a a female coach, then yeah, yeah, just get in contact and I can connect you with Kami and Khadija. Um, oh, wonderful. Yeah, and that and I think it's just a good inspiration, really. There's also Ketavan Arakamia Grant in Scotland who yes. isn't playing today, mm -hmm. and I've connected She's her with a number master. of girls. Yes, uh, yeah, I've connected her with a number of girls, and uh, they've all just spoke really positive about what it's mm -hmm. like to be coached by a top female player because that inspiration, mm -hmm. which you know, I can give inspiration, but I'm not a female player, right? So mm -hmm. it's nice for the girls to have a, a strong female coach. Um, so just looking at this game here, two of our young stars there, Natasha. Uh, yes. Ellis Dinelli, which you might have heard of, and uh, the late addition who signed up about 10 minutes before the tournament yeah. is Shambhavi, who also played very well. Oh, Shambhavi, okay, wonderful, yes. Yeah, from Nottingham, also played very well this weekend, um, yes. uh, yesterday in the London Juniors. Okay, so round two is actually over. The next round's in 15 seconds, and we are going to start off by following... Curious Parrot. So I'm just going to watch Curious Parrot. Who's she? Who's she up against? So both the women IMs have two out of two. So they're Lovely. showing they're they're not just coaches; they can play as well. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. And okay. We have 16 players with two out of two. Here we go. So it's Sposib against the Curious Parrot. Sposib. Ah, so this is one of the the uh, young talents from the Midlands, Jude. Ah, okay. oh, that's Jude is, is Sposib. That's right, yeah. Yes. Can you see what Sposib is, Natasha? Um, no. Okay, we'll turn oh, it round. Bishop, Bishop, Bishop. Bishop <laughs> <backwards>. <laughs> so if you just turn it round, you'll see. Yeah, yeah, I've got it now. Very clever, very clever. Okay. Well, you um, wouldn't be knight backwards, would you? Because that would be way too, too hard to fast. play. I can't even... It's too early in the morning, I can't even think about it. Um, and now look, the kids are whipping out their top theory on the Archangelus variation of the Royal Lopez. Mm -hmm. So Black plays, uh, Curious Parrot played Bishop C5, as opposed to the sort of normal Grandmaster move, Bishop to E7, which has been more solid. But uh, Bishop C5 is what we call an active defense. So here, of course, the Bishop and B6 very active. And H6 is a really good move, because what White could have done earlier, instead of 10 Bishop C2, was to play bishop g5 which would have okay. put a lot of pressure so that okay. is why after bishop c2 curious parrot played h6 preventing uh preventing this although it appears she might have lost the piece here the oh yeah. there was a swish and zook there was a swish and zook i'm trying to work out what's going on yeah. yeah do you want to just go back to a few moves it was um d takes c6 this could be your leader this okay. could be your right let's see swish and zook leader here d5 and here black should have played knight e7 um, but instead, she took on e3, allowing e3. the swish and zug. D takes e6. There yes. we go. So, do you, want to, do you want to mark that down, Natasha? As the so as a curious front parrot, suppose bishop backwards. Yes. Okay. And then D takes c6. It was, yeah, very good from Jude. Excellent. And okay, let's get this back to live. Okay. Okay, but 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 um, curious parrot has a good attack against the king here, because if the king goes in the corner, obviously then um, knight f two. Knight f two. Let's have a look. Yeah, still trying to. Some people trying to join. We've got sixty nine now. So well done, everybody. You've broken our record, shattered it. Who from last year's inaugural? Yes. Yeah. 
So Jude, Jude, I um, I say I'm, I'm from London. He's up in the Midlands, but uh, I know his coach, who's spoken very highly of him. And in fact, I met Jude when he was very, very young. Uh, actually, at the same event that um, I think Alicia was talking about, we went to one of those world, European youth events a couple of years ago before COVID, and he was very young, very yeah. keen, promising player. Um, and it's good, isn't it, Tasha, to see these kids go from being what you want to deem promising in inverted commas, yeah. to actually studying chess and playing a lot. Um, and really grabbing the bull by the horns in a way, just yeah. to play a lot of chess and really improve. So um, I can see that Jude has improved a lot, and he's certainly one of the juniors we hope could be a title player one day. Yes. Although he's... This game is not clear to me, because Curious Parrot is a pawn-up. Um, oh, no, she's a piece... Uh, hang on, did she... Did she, she got it back from that pin. Uh, there was this... Um, I missed this. I was just signing yeah, someone no, in. No, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So she had... Um, Can you go I, back to that, if you don't mind, just to yeah, see, because sure. I, uh, I was letting someone in the team. Yeah, it's, it was here. Oh, so if I go back a couple... Oh, sorry. Let's... Uh, Let's flip it back. Yeah. So actually, we play on the fact that she was. Yeah. Yeah, she lost the piece there. But what she did manage to do was get her queen round to b6. Here you go, check. Oh, that's clever. And this is a nasty check because... Queen b8 um, was a great move. Yeah. yeah. And so um, Jude had to interpose the knight here, and that was how he lost the piece back. Okay. So she went knight f6 there. She could have actually taken it on d4 anyway. Yeah. Because if queen takes g4, then d3 check wins the bishop. Oh, another vision, Zook. <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't know. If you is there a, is there a rule that if you if you do multiple swish and zigs in the game, you actually win the prize because oh, you probably do. Yeah, it's a rollover of five points yeah. per swish and zig or something. <laughs> anyway, she did it uh, like this, which is fine. So she's a pawn up, and it's yes. not it's not clear, is it? Um, a ninety five, trying to good. come round to c four, king h one, knight c four, nice, and yeah. d five. E5 now, okay. Well, you can very much see what she did to him, what, what Curious Parrot did in the previous game to Rafe, Queen D3. Yes. Could happen to her. <laughs> That's true. That was true. These were lined up here, yeah, weren't they, just now? Okay. Um, okay, so B3 first. Yeah, it's probably a good I idea to get that bishop off if she can, but she can't quite yet. Of course, Black did not Ooh. take on D4. Maybe on she's trying to do this one and swap this. Chapter. Yeah, get the knight back on B5. Yeah. yeah. Um, just in case anyone can't see it, Queen takes D4 would not be good because of Bishop H7 check, winning the Queen. Yeah, so um, if, Black, if Black takes on oh, D4. Oh, sorry. Yes, Queen take here. Yes, you can't do this yeah, because of yeah. this, this discovered attack. So, of course, Rakaia immediately bashed out A5. And you're right, she took on D3. Yeah, oh, so yes, it's yes. kind of a question, I think. Is the black knight going to be quite strong on b5, or is white going knight f5 and getting an attack of his own? So it looks like yeah, everything yeah, is yeah, to yeah. play for it because look, he should go knight f5. This white's attack could be strong, couldn't it? Uh, knight f5. Yeah. Rook, Maybe sort of like rook g3, yeah. Rook g6. Ooh, this Ooh. is this is sharp. It's in the balance, isn't it, this game? Um, yeah, the black extra c pawn isn't really much use, right? Not yet, but if you get not to yet. an end game, it could be. Um, right, and so Curious Parrot's trying to come in here, h4, and this is where we're at. Yeah, h4 is a good move. Oh, no, oh, this no. f6 wasn't. Okay. Well, we did say this game was was in the balance because yeah. both sides had all sorts, yeah. I think white should now oh. be able to win. Oh, that's a good move, yeah. Well done. Well, well done, um... Sib. What a game. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, what do you want to see? Should we see? Um, let's see. Three people on three out of three. Rose so Moon. Smashing Lad has managed to. Oh, recover. look. Rose Moon against Plaskett. Yeah. Should we shut that one out? Let's have a look. There we go. So here is uh, Women International Master Khadija from Algeria. I think, she, I think she lives in South Africa now, but I'm not entirely sure. Okay. So I think she's married to a South African chess player. Okay. And here, difficult queen endings, there's always a chance for perpetual checks and things. But the problem yeah. for black is that she has too many weak pawns. 
And also the White King is very hard for... The White King is get. very safe, isn't it? In this yeah, scene. very hard to get a perpetual check in a position where where Grandmaster Plastic Plaskett is... His king is just so safe, right? Yeah. Although, so now White could... Yeah, so Black could go Queen D5 with... Um... Do you think he's going to swap or take on A7 here? Oh, take on A7. I think he's analysing... I think he's analysing if he swaps. Yeah. Will he be winning this ending? Which he... Probably should be, but I think he should just take on e7. But then e3 check. Yeah, and then might just meet that with f3. Okay. Queen, queen d2. Okay. Nothing is that clear, which is why he's gone for this. Yes. Yeah. Okay, but now this black queen's getting active. Black I think queen. white's white's definitely way better in this end game, isn't he? Because yeah, now now can he take on e4? He doesn't want to do it. It's very clever. He doesn't want to do it. Now he'll take on e4 with the queen. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. He has. Just a, a note to all the juniors. You notice that he, he obviously saw queen takes e4 there immediately, but he didn't play it straight away. Okay, one thing I noticed, Natasha, is the juniors, they see it, and bang, they want to yeah. play it. Okay? Yeah. Just double-check your move. You know, Even in blitz, you know, he's got 36 seconds, but the Grandmaster... Ooh, ooh, that's on freeze. Yeah. I don't know, just the, just the like coaching though, which is yesterday I noticed uh, a lot of the kids would say, I had a good position, but I played one yeah. quick move, okay, obvious move, and it didn't work out. So, um, okay, Keith has drawn with Joe Katz. Okay, right. Now, I have to admit, I don't know who Joe Katz is. So, let's uh, let me just check my. Ah, okay. So, Joe Katz is uh, the dad of a girl who is quite promising, mm -hmm. Natasha. She's only six. Um, she mm -hmm. she won an under eight London Junior qualifier. Wonderful. A few weeks ago, and she played yesterday in the under eight London Juniors. Okay. So, the dad she apparently... today. No, because the dad said she doesn't really like blitz. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he's trying to get her to play slower games. So, but he himself is playing. I don't know how strong he is, but I've heard from someone that he's not he's pretty decent and clearly he is because if you draw the yes. grandmaster you must be okay this is an interesting one as well shamshank against nazriz so um how would you assess nazriz plays a lot in the english chess players team um and so is a very experienced blitz player um and actually nazriz from commentaries i've done before he often berserks as well mm -hmm. so he's quite fast and shamshank this um, is this is clear. Yes, yes, um, yes. I would say this should be a draw because he should just go g7 and then maybe she's playing for more. Is she playing for more here? Why is she not going g7? She is. She's got to play quickly because rook c8 she can take on b3 and it should be at least the draw. Actually, rook g6 check wins oh, and then g8. Oh no! Um, um, but she's also threatening. Um, she can do rook g3. No, but now it's a draw because yeah. yeah, now it's a draw. Um, actually, when this game finishes, I just noticed something really fun in this position, okay? Uh, which I couldn't, I didn't have time to explain during yeah. the action of the game. Yeah, I'll, I'll show it to you in a moment. I think yeah, it should yeah. just be a draw. It looks drawn now, doesn't Maybe it? Just key h3 or something. Just don't lose on time. I think that's the, <laughs> that's the main thing. Yeah, do you so think she should? It's, it's, hard, it's easy when you're not playing, isn't it, Natasha? Just swap yeah, the rooks and it's a draw. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, she, should, she shouldn't lose this, right? No. Yeah. Check. Yeah, there was a very fun, fun, uh, interesting something that happened. Yeah, if you want to just go back about 15 moves. Yeah. If you just scroll up. I think if you just scroll up with your mouse, I'm you just should. Just trying to find scroll. Move. I'll do it with my hand. Yeah. So, about rook takes b yeah, about here, if you just go back yeah. just a couple of moves. Uh, there, yeah. So so just go through it. So g7 was played. Yes. Uh, if you just, I think, yeah. And then she played rook c8. Okay. And then here I suggested that we could actually play rook g6 uh, check. Rook g6 check. I don't know if I can actually play it on the board. board. I think if you click analysis board. Analysis board. Um, okay. Yeah, so rook g6 was winning. But actually, um, a rook g6 was I was hoping for some stomach here. And it doesn't feel like I've got the right position here. So g7, the computer says rook c8 was a blunder. It was because of rook g6 check. Yeah, so that it wants rook h3 and rook yeah. g3. 
I was trying to do a stalemate trick where we go rook g rook c8, yeah. which is what was happening in the game. And then after, so black played rook c8 here, yeah. And after rook g6 check, king takes h4. If we queen, black takes it. It's a stalemate, but it's not stalemate because there's the b pawn. On the no, side. there's pawns. Okay, but I thought there was a position where the b pawn had gone, and it could have happened. Yeah, now b2 rook b8 is winning. We go here, and white wins. Okay. Okay. Maybe I need to get a stronger coffee because I think I, mean, <laughs> uh, I forgot the b pawn was on the board. <laughs> I saw there was a position where where the b pawn was off the board. Um, when you're losing, it's always a good idea, isn't it, to look for stalemate tricks yeah. just like that. But I thought a draw a draw was a fair result. Ah, oh, there are still. Good. Wait a minute. Let me just refresh that. I think we got. Okay, right. Well, into round four. Um, oh, yeah. Started. Okay. Let's so start. just having a cut now. There are seven people on three out of three. Uh, someone we haven't mentioned is is Cass G two thousand and one. Let's go. She's to... another one of our strong female players um, who plays regularly in the foreign CL yes. and um, trying to encourage her to do more federated chess. Uh, and, and she'll try and break more into the England women's team. Yeah. So I think she has about 1950 sort of rating fee day. And Excellent. she's got three out of three so far. She actually beat Peter Sowery. Oh, wow. Very good. With the black pieces. Yes. And uh, I noticed Cassie played the, the Grunfeld defense, which uh, actually it looks like a complete equal position in the end, in the end game, but he lost on time. <laughs> So this is her against Smashing Lad. Who's... Is she playing Smashing Lad now? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. that should be a good game. Cassie against yes. Matt. Okay, so Cassie's gone for this sort of like close she Sicilian have... style yeah. position. Yeah, Matt plays all sorts of openings. I mean, it depends on what day of the week it is, to be honest. Because <laughs> he's very well prepared. Um okay and then here white's plan is to either play d4 or to be f4, f4, or f4 or f5 yeah. yeah knowing cassie i'm sure she's going to go f4 here let's see f4, okay i don't know i have an inkling that she's just going to lump the f pawn forward f4, or d4 one of those well she normally plays the grand prix attack so i'm surprised the pawn's still on f2 she's restraining herself but it, don't you like normally if you well she must be considering the two f4. like a pawn to support that if you're going with your f pawn Right, so she's just going to throw it right up to f5 and then. Well, maybe she's worried about d4, knight c4. That yeah. could be. C3. Okay. This is also good because now she keeps the option of d4 and f4 still. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all to play for. So, yeah, d4 now or f4? Or f4. Or something I mean, else. So you rook to somewhere. Yeah. I think after d4. What white would like is for black to take it and then put the knight on d4. Uh, mm. I think it's a good idea to have your knight behind the pawn because they work well together, don't they? That the knight can spring yeah. forward. So if we go d4 here, c takes, knight takes d4. Yeah. Um, I guess black just wouldn't take. Oh, but then black, so black would maybe move the knight into c4 or something. Yeah, knight d7 or knight c4, yeah. Right. And uh, that rook maybe that's is, why she wants to put a rook on them. But rook b1 is, is super high, hyper, what do you call it, prophylactic, because she wants black yeah. to take on c3. But yeah. black should just not do it. I mean, I think he's just got right. bishop a6 here, which is quite strong. Yeah, uh, bishop a6. Well, then she has to go c4, but then the point of rook b1 was sort yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. pointless, really. Um, e6, okay. okay. Oops, no. e, e6, okay. E6, okay. I mean, it's definitely a move. It's just I wasn't sure I would have done that. Still okay for black. Yeah. Hoping for some kind of attack on the king side. Yeah, now this one's coming. This, that, that would be nice if you can get it. What do you think, Natasha, though? Are these pawns on E6 and D6 weak, or are they strong? Well, because, you know, if goes D4, strong, but she is managing to line up. Because now, now maybe you are threatening D. Oh my goodness, that's Ooh. scary. That's really scary, isn't it? You have to go rookie four, I suppose, because this you've got to watch out for oh, this. Rookie four, though, yeah. Rookie four is the only move. Rookie four is not exactly what you want to do, but I think you have to do it. My goodness. Yeah. Well, this was the advantage of him playing e6, right? He got this diagonal. Yeah. I played many a blitz game with Mr. Matthew. George, very. Oh, no, no, but she's, what she's going for is if, if like knight f3, she's going for the Zvishenzug knight. <laughs> but how bad is it? If knight f3, <laughs> uh, knight f3, knight takes and, e6, um, 
Uh, and Smashing Lad's going for the attack. He must be analysing Knight F3. Hey, what about Knight F3? Knight, so Knight, Knight F3. takes E6. Knight takes E6, uh, maybe. King H8. King H8. Everybody is hanging. Everybody's hanging stuff. Yeah, okay, so this comes out. But this is surprising because I oh, don't know if the queen's that good here. I yeah. don't know what the queen's doing on that square. Okay. Unless he sacrifices on F4 or something. Is it all on to here? Yeah. But you've still got that. Maybe he oh he's sacrificed on F4, I see what you're saying, yeah. I have to admit, I don't I don't like Queen H1 because because now she can just go Queen E3 right. or something and defend, right? Right. I thought he should have gone for knight F3. Queen E3, she's played, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know, I feel like white might be out of the woods here. Mm. Unless sort of like G5 is strong. Uh, but G5, I take on F3 and then take on E6, check. Ooh, can she take on right. F3 and then knight takes E6? Knight takes E6? Someone's hanging rooks here. Yes. But who? Can, knight can. E6, King nice. G8. We might get a position where we take on E6, King G8, white takes on F8. Everything trades on off on E1, and then white support up in the end game. <laughs> yeah. But Cassie better hurry, because she ain't got time. Wait, got to be quick. Yeah, 10 seconds left. Come on, Cassie, pay attention to the clock. Yeah, so King G8's probably got to be played. Oh! Whoa, he planned this dirty trick. Okay, but now the knight's trapped. But could he go A4, A3? He's going to try it. A4, rook takes but... D6, A3. Oh, could she take and go King D1? Yeah. What's happening here? Yeah. Well, that knight on B1 is a is a free is an extra piece, but but it's not surviving. Okay, Ooh, so take she, on she F7, must take, take surely on she must take it and then go King D1. King D1. Okay, now King D1. D5. He should have played A4 A3. I thought he could have got his knight out there. Yeah, I and think with ten seconds to go, maybe he should just par with Rook F7 and just hope for so rookie rookie two. Okay, because now he can go d5 here, which is... d5, you take it off, right? Uh, this is... I don't know what he's doing, because he just no. lost his knight there. Isn't he yeah, just lost? Right. Isn't he just lost here if she swaps off rooks? Yeah, it's completely lost to black. Winning for white, right? But she's got six seconds. Can she do it? Yeah, because you get an increment. So, oh, not that one. Uh, oh, okay. So right. Yeah, she's decided <laughs> to get it. I know, she should have gone king b3, a3. But anyway, <laughs> this, this is probably okay. <laughs> So Cassie is pulled up. Yeah. Can she do it here? So he should go C4 here. C4, C4, D4, but then, well, then what? Yeah, she should swap. King D2. It's winning for white, but can she do it with four seconds and not lose on time? No, this should be winning, right? Just take it away. H4, King C2, opposition, King D3, King D3. or King B3. Yeah, this should be winning for her. This is one of those ones, isn't it? If you lose on time, yeah, you think, no, it. don't do it. <laughs> and now come and take the... Oh, you'd have to calculate if you want to come. Yeah, I think she should push the e pawn. Yeah. Because, of course, he's going to go... Hi, yeah, now he Hi, lost. Me. Yeah, now he lost. Well played, Cassie G. Wow, there was so... So we missed it, didn't we? Rook takes that was a good end game, right? <laughs> wow, <laughs> fantastic. So Cassie moves to four out of four. And Cassie moves into the end game stakes. Yeah, yeah, that... that Possibly, definitely. Yeah, I think possibly. that, that, that okay. should be considered. Yeah. Three yeah. ongoing games. Um, so okay. Here. Right, Auburn Climber against Maple Tree. Are they still playing? They are. Here they are. And so, oh, oh it's is very this? good for <laughs> In terms of, I'm oh, sorry for Maple Tree. Sorry, Black. In terms of material, because those pawns are just about to queen. They are, but Bishop F5. But Go, oh. oh, is that a checkmate? That's a checkmate. A checkmate. Yes, actually, Queen's checkmate. Queen's checkmate. Have done there, Natasha. He could have promoted to a bishop for checkmate. True, that is true. That would have been quite sweet, but with I'm three seconds, I doubt we can ask him to do that. Yeah. So okay. two players um, on four out of four. All right, all right. Two players on four out of four. And it looks like Cassie Cassie and Pascal, Pascal. So we might have to look at that. Um, and yeah. then we've also got Stambad and Atomrod and Jim Norfolk on three and a half. So all to play for still. And then and just a whole put whiz down. So we've three. got our two WIMs on three. Yeah, uh, Mary Hatman on three. Um, okay, oh, yeah, right. So Plaskett. 
Do you want um, to start with Cassie and Cassie? Cammy lost to Standard. Okay. Uh, Standard He's... is a very fast, yeah. very strong Blitz player. <laughs> okay, so Cassie, 4 out of 4. She's... It's funny because I think she plays this stuff for white. Okay, yeah. So so it's, it's a bit odd playing your own opening, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So here you'll probably the position set. Okay. So bishop c4 was the other line. He's just gone for this. Uh, yeah, the bishop d3, I think. Or can I just get bishop c4? Okay. So c3. Uh, white white should open up the position quickly. I'm surprised he didn't play c3 there. So I feel like black's probably okay now. Yeah, if he'd gone to c3, then what does she do? She has to take, and then he takes the d pawn. Right. Uh, and then she's got a whole load of dark squared weaknesses on d6 and so on. Yeah. Okay. And now black can just go d6 or something. h6 and d6, yeah. I feel like black should be okay here. What's black trying to do with these center pawns? Is it like a d6 e5 what do you think get a d5 in or d5 would be good yeah but I, you can't do it at the moment mm. okay so he's going to go f5 this is the danger for her and maybe she has to go f5 here yeah because i think if she goes bishop b7 yeah because uh, f5, f5 is is I don't think that's all right except if they take you're going to take back with, with uh, g or rook yeah, the rook the other two are pinned yeah. Oh, okay. So she's gone here. So she wants to go f5. E takes f5. But he could play really interesting. He could play f5 anyway. Yeah. E takes. E takes. Bishop takes, and then sack the rook on f5. Ah, defending across this way. Yeah. What's she going to do with this bishop? Are you going to have Queen Chateau? Thanks for the follow. Switch chess. So they're following you. Okay. Ah, clever. Queen B6 and the knight's not pinned anymore. Thanks for the follow, Ticklaz. So maybe she's going to get Bishop out this way. Yeah. But oh, the A pawn's a bit weak. Yeah. So Bishop D7, Rook A. Yeah. I don't know. I think she's playing well here. As long as she can avoid F5 being a sort of serious threat. Yeah, yeah. because if F5 comes with power then the black from white. Is going to be from yeah. white, yeah. Okay, so this is why he, he he's played knight to g3. Yeah, clearly the plan for white is to go So f5 now here. if f5, there's an extra option, which is this, trapping that bishop ooh, here. Ooh, but then bishop takes g5, h takes... Ah, yes, takes. exactly. There could be a strong sacrifice. So... Yeah. And now black can't really go f5 here because e takes. Right, so f5 is now happened so okay so the kind of choices yeah. i don't this... like this for black no um because g5 i think he who just sacrificed it maybe Archer, the g5 knight's in somewhere but then what do you do about f6 and then queen takes h yeah that's a big threat so maybe black has to go king h7 f6 bishop h8 but that's got to be that's you want to send him yeah, it's gotta it's gotta be quite quite nasty though. But maybe it's maybe it's holdable. What would I do for black here? So she must be analyzing g five. So yeah, so if you she... g five. Yeah, bishop takes h takes queen takes. He's done it. Okay, so g five so take. Oh, he's not done okay, it. He so didn't right. want to do that line. Okay, so now she has to take on h four. And Zug prize. <laughs> <laughs> I still think Jude's one is a little bit better. Though. Yeah. <laughs> Could he go knight h5 here? Yeah. Done it. Just... Oh, he's trying to win the best attack. Best attack. So bishop h8 is met by queen takes h6, and that's crushing. Yes. Uh, this that might already very, be... Very, very scary. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe queen c5 here. Oh, that's nice, Lauren. Queen c5. Oh, but then knight takes. Yeah, king h7. It's a pawn down with a bad position, but at least just in that right. Game. Yeah, I was yeah. actually analyzing queen c5, rook f5. 
Yeah, now, now unfortunately, this looks lost because Queen H6 is killing. Yeah, yeah. This is a scary attack. Yeah, I had in mind uh, Queen C5, Rook F5. That looks really dangerous. If you go back, if you go back a couple of moves, but we'll see it after the game. Maybe. See after, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, that's checkmate. This is coming oh, in. G7, yeah. Okay, Cassie makes a play. Yeah. yeah. If you just go back, so click analysis board there. And if you just go back a few moves. Did you, can you see the analysis board now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you just go through to F5, move 19. Yeah. And then just go through that a little bit. Go through the moves till. G5. Yeah. Six. So G takes no knight h5 blunder. Hilarious. No. Okay. G takes. Yeah. So after knight h5. Yeah. Uh, I was suggesting queen c5 here. Yes. And I forget what the computer says, by the way, because the computer is just really harsh in these lines. <laughs> um, so the idea is after knight takes g7 and king h7 defends the h pawn. And if, yeah, so that seems, it's still bad, of course, but at least it's. Yeah. Black is holding. So just go back to queen c5 there, Natasha. Yeah. I was actually looking at, because the black queen is attacking the knight, uh, I was looking at rook f5 here. Uh -huh, sacrifice here. And then if e takes, then fg7. And then the idea is that we attack the rook and queen h6, and the key point is that the black queen cannot take the knight. This looks nice. But then black could chuck an f4 here, which F4. is still, it's still losing. It's just, uh, yeah, then I take the rook on... F8, the and the knight takes F4. Yeah. But black is still playing, right? Black is still. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. with the world's worst pawn structure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway, I like to rook F5, so I just wanted to, to mm. show. Okay. So nice. Jim moves to five. That was a nice attack from Jim. That was, it was. I mean, he played, uh, what was the nice move he played? Knight H5, yeah, he didn't take on G7. He, he played my age, which the computer laughed at, although we're going to ignore. We'll say Jim yeah. knows what he's doing. Jim. Okay, so, so Jim's on five out of five. Stanbad four and a half, Keith four and a half. So they didn't okay. play each other. Um, we've got, oh, let's yeah. see, um, Curious Parrot against Peter Sowery. This is in progress now. Um, looking good for Peter Sowery. He's a bishop up and got some pawns coming in. Yeah. Looks looks like it's just winning for white here. Yes. Experience over youth. At this <laughs> so yeah. What point do I become experience over youth, Natasha? Am I already there, or is it? How old are you, Lauren? <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely in the experience camp now. <laughs> well, it was just over Christmas. We had a sort of family got games, oh. and it was the youngsters versus the oldies, and then they yeah. didn't know what to do with me. No. So uh, <laughs> that's a conversation for another day. What do you, what do you even want to be? Youth or experience? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> half, of both, half of both probably, both, yeah. Both, yeah, you want them both. That does remind me, Natasha, of the time when many years ago when I was 21, yeah. I played in a tournament and a, a, a European grandmaster told me I was very talented, only to find out I was actually six years older than he thought I was. Oh, no. He thought I was 15. He said, you're very talented. And when I told him my real age, he said, oh, then you have no talent. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Maybe they're lost in translation from the uh, European. I'm writer. sure he didn't mean that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was quite funny, really. Um, Is Peter going to mate with the bishop on e5? He, he he he's mated with the queen. He's mated with the queen. Okay, three on game go. No. Games. So let's see who's still playing. Who's still playing? There's one. Elise. Again, oh, now these are two of our top female stars. Okay. So here we have Ellis and um, Emily. Uh, okay. Emily, who plays, by the way, for our... I know Emily, Emily. yes, Emily, I know. Um, okay. okay, but it's all over. It's all over. Um, yeah, the, the rook is clearly better than the bishop. Win for Ellis. Okay, and one on game, one game on going. So let's see if we can find it. Okay. And is there still one? Oh yeah, it's um, last one going. Uh, I think the battle of, battle of the youngsters. Yeah, we have um, Dizzy Abak. 
Yeah, so uh, he looks is, like a lawnmower happening. Looks like a lawnmower, yeah. So he's only seven. Oh gosh, which he's one? Dizzy back. Yeah, Dizzy Abak. Yeah, yeah, back. yeah. He comes wow. to my club in in London, and he's mm. quite a promising player. Yeah, he's only seven. He did well with just the last few days in the London Junior Under Eights. He nearly he came top ten, and he was Dizzy under Abak. seven. Yeah, under seven in the under eight tournaments. He was giving up a seventh yeah. of his life. Wow. <laughs> In, uh, in terms of age <laughs> to, yeah. to his opponents. So he's he's one to look out for. Okay, so, next yeah. round's in five seconds. I say, let's have a look at Stambad. Because um, we haven't seen... We haven't checked him out yet. So this, this kid is a bit of a blitz specialist, right? And he's won a lot of tournaments recently. I think he did very well. He won a um, Mill Hill Congress. We won a Golden yes. Green or something. Yes. Yeah, certainly. Um, and you can see he's got a very high rating. Yes. Oh, now we should follow this because he's got, he's got a chance... To play Grandmaster Jim Plaskett. Yes. And I think he's whipped out the Joe Barber system. So he does that. See... Yes. Yeah, it's a good idea, actually, by the way, when you're playing a Grandmaster to, yeah. uh, or if you're playing a much higher rated, don't try and get in a theoretical debate, just play chess. Yeah. And here, Standbad's just going to play, at some point, he's going to play Rook E1, uh, Rook to D1 and go E4. But Jim has stopped it. He's got Knight E4 himself. Okay, so Jim's going to try and. Looks like he's Jim's going for all out for attacks today. He is, but I don't necessarily like this in black because doesn't white just go knight b3? So knight b3 looks very strong here because bishop right. d6, bishop d6. Now instantly by Stambad. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure I like this. And now bishop g5 looks quite strong. Bishop g5. Cool, he's seeing the move, Stanley. Very good, yeah. And then <laughs> queen c7 is also very... And then knight d5? He's done it. Well, I mean, they're barely playing the moves after. So rook, Bishop takes, Rook takes. No, Stanbad's got more time than he started with. <laughs> and he's uh, already he's got good, a, good, a, good, a nice uh, position against a Grandmaster. <laughs> they've got no fear, have they, though? No, no fear. fear at all. No fear. So I think Black might have to take this pesky knight, otherwise he's in a bit of trouble. Yeah. And then Rook takes, Bishop b6. Now the question can is... Take on... oh, can we take Yeah, on Bishop d5. Point? Hang on, this is getting a bit hairy here. What's, What's happening here? here? So, well, no. c5, Bishop d5. Knight c5, bishop d5. And then he wants to go bishop c4. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, this is this is this is getting spicy here. So yeah. What about yeah? Because the bishop on g5 is also yeah. not that amazing, right? Because h6 g5 is going to win the bishop. Right. So white has to be a little bit careful. If he takes on c5, then yeah. bishop e5 threatens bishop c4 winning the rook on f1. Yeah. So this is what. And black is also going to play h6 as well. And this is the threat. C4. I didn't C4. think of that. Wow. So the idea is after takes, then knight C5, he won't allow black to go bishop to C4. Nice. A blocking maneuver. It's, yeah, he's doing very well, Stan. Yeah, this is a. Uh... I was actually analyzing something else. I was analyzing knight C5, bishop D5, and then. I don't know, bishop E7. No, maybe, maybe C4 is the only move. So if Jim now takes it. So Jim yes. takes. So knight C5. So you can do knight C5 straight away, or you could maybe recapture. Whoa, okay. So... Back. Okay, Jim's gone bishop back. Yeah, so he's, he's planning to go. Uh... A5, that looks nice to me. Um, except okay. if, you, if you take, you get this big pass D pawn. Are you not worried about this H6 G5 idea? I mean, Stanley must be investing a no. piece of something. I'm not worried about it yet, because H6 you can take on B7. Yeah, so we'll have bishop D5 and then uh, H6. Wow, well, I haven't thought about a, that a, yet. H6 now? <laughs> H6, yes, he's done it. Um, okay. I don't know if, if, yeah, so what he'll do is he'll let black go g5, g takes h4, which will at least mess right. up his pawn structure. Yeah. Or he'll go bishop g3, f4, allow black to take on g3. This is interesting. Jim is just literally, Jim he could have gone g, yeah. g, uh, g5 then. He Jim just felt the need to get his pieces out, which... It's very sensible. Maybe. Sensible, yeah. <laughs> That's what I was. Did, he, miss, did he really miss G five there? there? Um, no, I don't think he missed it. I think it was deliberate. Do you think he thought against the kid? I better just play it safe. Yeah. Just play it safe. Yeah. I mean, he's still got a good position. He could have come in the other way as well, couldn't he? Bishop two. Bishop B seven. And then D six. Oh, that was a good move. That was a good idea. Yeah. Now he's in a bit of a jam, isn't he? I think Stanford wants to just kind of. Yeah, but how bad is his king, though? Is his king a little bit weak? You could go knight in on c6 and then try and go e7. Yeah, he should have got knight, <laughs> knight to uh, 
Knight c6 there. He's doing it now. Okay, but it's still interesting. He's still threatening. Knight takes e5 is coming. Oh, yes. And knight e7. You can't defend them both. Oh, he's going to second exchange. Knight e7 is winning. Now. Isn't knight e7 just purely winning? I think so. And now knight e7? Knight e7 is winning an exchange. Takes. And this knight's on priest. Well, queen e6. Queen e6. A queen e6. Okay. Uh, what's happening with the queen e6? That looks sensible. Queen d2. It looks like it. All right, because of knight f6, queen d8 check wins immediately. Ooh. So how do you defend this well, knight? Exactly, how does he defend this knight? Samba's he... winning. We could have the tournament opened up here. Yeah. I'm sure uh, the other chasing pack will be very happy to see Stan win this, because then there'll be four and a half out of five, or whatever it is, five. Yes. So queen, so, queen d8 check. Queen d8 now, yes, he did it straight oh, the queen h7 is not clear. Okay, because the knight defends the rook. So now he's just going to take on b6 with the rook. Yeah. Oh, this should be over. So queen d... Queen... Queen f6. No, he can't go there. Queen f7. Queen c8. Okay. If he just takes on... Oh, my goodness. There's a lot of queens. <laughs> <laughs> well, this threatens mating one. It's game over. It's game over. Wow, the kid... Nice game, Stanford. Very nice, yeah. But it looked like Black had a good... I don't know. Black should have gone g5. Maybe he just didn't want to get involved in the complications. and It just yeah. went wrong for him quite quite badly yeah yeah so okay. standard moves to five out of five Standard moves to five and, and a half joined by plaskis on five so let's see atomrod could catch up so we could see oh, atomrod, atomrod against rafe okay. let's see this oh by the way camille uh camellia is doing well five out of six now okay we're gonna check in on her um well no, we should see this game because i think we'll atomrod yes. or should you want to see camellia's game is she still playing no moment. she's already won She's already won. Okay, let's see Atomrod now, and then we'll see her in a moment. I'll, I'll just have a quick check of her game. Yeah. So she... So now how is this? So oh, Ray a piece. is four pieces for a rook. No, four. I mean four pieces for a rook and two pieces. <coughs> two pieces for a rook. Two pieces for a rook, right? Yeah, and for a rook and a pawn. These are the kind of positions, though, you probably want to get Keith in because he can't grind you down. Yeah. It's a bit of a mess. Yeah, I think this is a Okay, Keith is right. obviously very good tactically as well. I mean, he's not. Yeah. So, what's happening? So, we go e6, bishop takes h3. Or is he looking at knight c6 here? I think he might be looking at knight c6 here. Knight c6. But then bishop right. takes, rook takes. Yeah, bishop has to take it. Or is bishop on d8? Or you could bishop g5 or bishop h4. Bishop h4 looks interesting. Attack in F2. Yeah, yeah. He's done it as well. Uh, okay. 17 seconds. I don't know. I'm not sure about 96. Maybe this was wrong. What's going on here? Anyone can win this. This this is quite pivotal for the chances, right, to win the tournament. Yeah. You kind of want to get this bishop out of the way, don't you? And then you can kind of do knight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here. You feel like black should be in the ascendancy now, but it's not clear still. There's because... a lot of pieces around that black king. You have yeah. To okay, Rafe's just going to go knight h3 check. Bishop d4. I don't know. Knight takes a6. Just take it. Knight okay. h3. King goes to somewhere. Take on f2. Knight h to g4 checks come in, but does it so matter? This is either a mate or a winning end game with the uh, a. Yeah, and then here, like, bishop c8. I don't know. Is that a6? a6, yeah. I mean, is there actually any threat? Knight e3 check. Might is there a mate? That's well, knight e4. Oh, my goodness. What's going on here? Knight e3 check. Oh. A7, bishop A7, knight E3 check, king H3. He's got eight seconds to calculate. Ah. Oh, my goodness. We better up, Rafe. got three seconds. He has to set the rook on A8. Okay. That doesn't spell disaster for black. No. Because he's got all these pieces. These pieces. <laughs> Look at this, this is a crazy, crazy position. I'm not even going to try and assess this. Yeah, so if white goes to e6 now, this could be... How can you play this for four seconds? Yeah, this is... This is this you is kind of want to get the king in a cage, don't you? When you do bishop and knight mates, and you want to kind of... We've got bishop h4 is check. Okay, this is quite... Knight c5 is a good move, because I think you need to cover the e6 square. So you just take right. in the knight. Yeah, that was white's kind of big trick. Now black should be winning, like g5, h5. 
Okay. And so black's going to. Because the knight on f5 yeah. defends the bishop, right? Yeah, yeah. On e7, so bishop a3 doesn't do anything. That was nice played by Rafe. Just um, he had a lot of problems in that. There was on. a lot of there was a yeah. lot of faff he had to deal with. But yeah. still, even here, the g4 should be winning. H4, bishop d5. God, we're gonna have the GMs loose probably. The GMs are going well, down here. The GMs going down here. Maybe. H4. Maybe. I can't see how White could hold this. Bishop c5 check or something. This is game over. G2, bishop c5 check. Bishop c5 check. He's done it. 0 1. Well played, Rafe. That's very well played, Rafe, because that was a right miss, wasn't it? Yeah. So, okay, we're six rounds. So, this must be the final round coming up. My goodness. So, <laughs> this has gone so, so, so quickly. A quick recap of the scores. Yeah. So, Stanbad's on his own. But Stanbad's there a, in the lead. But Stanbad people. hasn't played Keith, has he? I don't Is think he... Sambo's played Keith. He hasn't played oh, but he won't games. play Keith because Keith lost. Uh, so he might play like Kemi. He'll play. Yeah, he'll play the other the other chasing pack. He might get Peter. Yeah. But he might get Peter. He might get Peter Sowery. Okay, so Stanbad's in the lead ahead of Jim Plaskett, Rafe, um, Bishop, who's Jude, Jude Peter, Jude. and Kemi. Camilla, and then yeah. just half a point behind them, Atimrod says that's Keith, Ellis, um, and that's Andy Brett, isn't it? Uh, yes, that's right. Yep. Who also played last year and is a keen supporter of our tournament. So thank you, Andrew. Uh, Lost Cooper was hoping to see Rafe mate with a bishop and knight. Yes. <laughs> what, with three seconds left? True, I mean, against that's, Keith, very, yeah. that's very uh, ambitious. Best then game. <laughs> okay, uh, right. Last <laughs> round. Let's see Stambad again. So he has, he's he's got right. Keith. Oh, did you want to see Camilla? Um, we can do a bit of both, really. So yeah, let's see the we, haven't looked at, we haven't looked at Camilla's games yet. No, we need to do that. Maybe she'll have a bit of that. Because she's okay, done well. She's on five out of six. Let's see, yeah. let's see Cammy. She's got five out of six, and we haven't covered her yet. So let's no, no, see. no, no, we need to. And she's got Jim. We're Excellent. Got okay, let's see. Uh, Jim. So we've got a French Cammy. defense where... Okay, so here... Okay, she, she, didn't, she decided not to go queen b6 and win on the pawn. Here she's just going to go a5, bishop e7. So we're going to see maybe opposite castling in this game, or is she, how is she going yeah, to do well, it? I've seen Jim with these positions a million times. Yeah. I'm not sure about this for black, because knight d3 was not really a threat now, is it? So I want to, we, white will go a3. Oh, she's taken the knight, she didn't like yeah. it. Bishop e7. Okay, well at least she doesn't have her French bad bishop. Yeah, I think this should be good for white though. A3, yeah. queen d3. Yeah, she should just go bishop, bishop e7 and just go back. Bishop e7, she, yeah, she needs to get out this bishop, doesn't she? Yeah. A5. So, so a5 is the typical idea, but not normally with all the stuff that black did. Yeah. Uh, she should have gone a5, a4 already with the bishop on d7. Yeah, I think she's mixed a couple of systems here, which is I don't really like. Yeah, and I has to go back to c6. There's nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, why why always <clears throat> has a space advantage in these positions? So h5 will come, or knight g5, and uh, bishop e. Yeah, just I think it's just quite, quite pleasant for white this position. Okay, h6. Is she so she might be worried about if bishop g5, then bishop g5 to swap off that bishop, and then she's got weak. Dark squares. Uh, uh, maybe actually knight g5 was even better. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so queen e2 comes, I think. Queen e2. Or can he take... Yeah, queen e2 is sensible. Yeah, defending b2. Yeah, I don't know. Black is playing a little bit with fire here because... Yeah, she can't really go b5 here because then surely just oh, b3. She has to. Well, she's a bit committed to her, right? Yeah. yeah, now he's just going to... Oh, I don't know about that, because now A4 stabilises everything. Ah, nice. Yes, yes, he yes. Should, okay. He should have taken three, three ideas. Three. I mean, I still okay. think White's got a nice position, because the Knights aren't really doing anything for Black. But this yeah. has improved a lot, hasn't it, in the last couple of moves? It has, and I think he shouldn't, shouldn't really allow it. But okay, it's still, it's still playable. And also in Blitz, you know, he's not got time. He's just playing like sexy yeah. moves. Ooh, G5. Whoa, Okay. Yeah, he should have got h5 yeah maybe cammy's gonna 
Just leave a king Not in the central, king. put it on the queen side, yeah. Wow, king d7. <laughs> That's a very, no, it's very nice because the, yeah. the, the, she stabilized everything on the queen side there with the knights. But okay, he's going to go knight g4, which is a very sensible idea to hold everything. Yeah, that just stops any, any black business over there. Can this pawn be? I don't think we can take that. That just looks wrong. She's done it there. Well, Really? She has, yeah. I think he just assumed that it was not possible. Yeah. Wait, bishop takes c4? Is it possible? Because is there any dangerous uncovered attack with this one? I mean, it could go to That's amazing. I think it's just one of those things. That's that's I think that. he just assumed yeah. he, could, he could play it. Yeah. And then... Knight takes d4. Wow, hang on. Bishop takes c4. No, oh, you should have done this. What? Bishop g6? What? No. So if did he just lose a pawn here? Did he yeah, just... Because if bishop g6, you could take on... Um... E2, yeah. E2. Yeah, bishop takes f7 doesn't really do anything for white anyway. Yeah. So... No, oh, no, this was quite it's brave of really her. good for black, isn't it? This, you know what, pin, brave, this pin's but... down here, so if... But if you take here, you can just take back with the queen. queen. Yeah. No, it was very brave, but also... I, I think it was right for her to go for it. Mm. Okay, so... Pawn up okay, doesn't so this one is on priest now. But yeah. it can be defended. I like just rook here, say. So rook h7, yeah. Rook h7, could white play rook takes d5 check? Oh, now what are you doing? Rook here. Yeah, rook, rook takes d5. d5 because it, e, takes, e takes and queen f5. E takes queen f5. It's the rook on h7. But it does lose oh, the knight on g4. Yeah, it does lose the knight on g4, though. Oh, gosh. In fact, this is quite clever as well, because queen takes f7 is met by queen takes g4. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And maybe he could play rook c1 here. He's not going to go rook d5. <coughs> yeah, maybe he could play rook c1 and then swap queen everything off and then queen one. f7. Knight f6 check. Oh, he's going to play... Okay, he's going to take on d5 here. With the can knight. you go in queen e4? Yeah, you can't go there because it's a pin. I oh, know, of course you can't. <laughs> well, this is, this is quite fantastic. So he, she played queen b3. Maybe she should have gone g4 there, I don't know. I think g4 was quite strong, actually, for her there. Um, on the previous move, Natasha, when he went right. knight e3, yeah. could, she have, could she have gone g4 here? Maybe. Because if... Oh, uh, Queen takes f7 and queen e4 check. Yeah. But okay, he could just take on g4 with a knight. Right. Uh, okay, I don't know. I thought g4 was quite a good move. Mm. Okay, so still all to play for. This is kind of pivotal, right? Whilst you're just analyzing this, let's just see if anyone else has still finished. So I'll have a look at Standard. He is. Well. Should we pop in on Stambad? Okay, let's pop that's in. That's a bit of a crazy position. Rafe is. Stambad. Oh, no, what is this? What is this? Uh, he's got to give up his exchange. Yeah, this, this could, be, lo this could oh. be losing. This could be losing for Stambad. I think Stambad's losing. Yeah. So, yeah. With a bit of care. Rook d5. But Peter's got no time, though. True. But now he's in an end game, it's less true, true. And bishop e3, very sensible move, just trade off. Yeah, so if Stanley loses this, this one, so king h2 or king g1, I don't know. Oh, maybe king h rook e5 is a good move. Yeah, could have played rook e5. I don't know, I don't like this. And then bishop g2, rook f4, rook f4. Yeah, he's got to find rook f4, but it is winning. Why is it winning? King f2. Don't touch the h pawn. We bring right. the king across to b3. Yeah, this is lost because he's got to. Well, uh, black uh, can't do this. He can't do this yeah. because h4, h5 now. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's lost. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, that's a win for Peter. So Peter. Does that, oh, that takes out Stanley then. Uh, plus, get already won, by the way. Okay, all right. Got so, let's go back. so who's now in the lead then? So, so Peter and Plaskett, Peter, Sarah and Jim are on six. 
on six. So, okay, those are on six. So can anyone join them? On Rafe, Rafe could Rafe join and, them or and... Jude could join them. Yes, so Rafe and Jude. So this is to check join that game the leaders. Up? The winner of this joins the leaders on six. Okay, so how are we doing here? Rekending. Rafe has Rafe just has a... Has look at what yeah, Rafe. this is not clear because... Um, okay, Black should be winning. Yeah. But with seven yeah, seconds... Yeah, this should be winning if the black king goes f5. You just go king f5, don't you? And then put the king on e4, king e3. Okay, but e2 just e2. e2. Because then we're threatening. Rook h1, swap off, swap off on e1, and then yeah, swap off on e1 and just win the ending. Yeah. Yeah. So Rafe is probably going to join them now on six, right? Yeah. Yes. Wow, there's going to be a three-way tie. But I think Jim's going so, to win. So what on happens then? Is it it's just tiebreak? They don't have a playoff. I think Jim's anything. going to win on. I think Jim's going to win on uh, tiebreak. Right. I have to admit, I, I can't remember what I said about the prizes because it's a hundred pound <laughs> chess.co.uk prize. By the way, uh, I'd like to thank chess chess.co.uk, which is the chess shop on Baker Street, for for sponsoring us uh, with the prizes. Mm, lovely. And the hundred pound. First prize. I don't know if I'm going to divide it by three or, yeah. or uh, just give it to Jim. I don't know. I think Peter and Rafe might say that they played quite well to deserve. Uh, yeah. So the, uh, the tie break that Lee Chess suggests has Plaska and Rafe equal on twenty six point five. I don't know what that twenty six point five means. And then Peter on twenty five. Uh, is it the book holds or something like the sum of progressive scores? Could be. Could be. Could be. By the way, there's some interesting end games. Do you want to flick to BK Alicia versus Rosemoon? Tell me where to go, right? Uh, uh, that looks like a fascinating game. If you just scroll down, I think there was uh, you'll find them somewhere. Here we go, Rose. Rosemoon. Yeah, look, looks like an interesting rook ending. Oh wow! Okay, and so five... here, here, um, white is a pawn up, but the thing is, black has a lot of activity. Yeah, yeah. So can we just go king? Okay, so. If we take on e6, black takes on it. It should be a draw. Should be a draw. Rook takes f4, should be a draw. Rook h6, whatever. e6, e7. Yeah. No. Okay, just don't fall for the mate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hang on, hang on. It's, it's a loss. Winning. It's a loss. Alicia might be winning. Alicia might win this. Okay, now she just has to bring the king across. Wait, wait, is it? Are you close enough? Yeah, you do king. Yeah, yeah, king, king e2, king f1. Wow, she managed to win this position. This trick, yeah, wow, that was so Congratulations, tricky. Congratulations, Alicia. Wow, I beat into the very woman nice. in social master. Nice. Okay. We, we pep, you pep talked her, didn't you? That's why. That's it, yeah, <laughs> she did it. And she was on the okay. stream earlier, everybody, in the, the, just before the start of the tournament. Uh, so wow. congratulations for Alicia on that win just there. Women in Social um, Master, so yeah. Rafe, Jim and Peter all finished on six out of seven in this great fun attack. Uh, for the attack, you could look at my game, the Smashing Lad or Plaskett. Stanbad has thrown his hat into the ring for okay. the best attack prize. Did he say he played Smashing he played Lad? Smashing Lad and Plaskett okay. were both good attacks. So White resigned. Let's have a look. Okay. Um, we'll do the we'll do the adjudication just after when we to give us a chance. Okay. But, he played um, um, two okay. good attacks there. Anyone any more entries into so the best attack, the best yeah. end game, and the best Zvishen Zug are the extra uh, prizes that Natasha has uh, kindly donated. Yeah. So looking at the chart, we see um the top female players. So actually the top female it's player Ellis. was Ellis Danelli with five and a half. Very good yes. score. She only lost to Rafe. Well, that's a good, good result. He won the tournament. And then equal second was Rukaya, a.k.a. Curious Parrot, with her after Parrot, excellent yeah. performance yesterday. Yes. She uh, And Kami as okay. well. BK Alicia. So we have um, Alicia. a number of yes. uh, players. So I think the three qualifiers then for yes. the simultaneous on the 26th of February against Harriet Hunt and Susan Malich, yes. both five times English women's champions, uh, I think it will be Ellis, Rakaya, and Alicia. Well, I tell you, uh, good good luck also to Harriet and yeah, I was going to say you have their work cut out. This is these strong these youngsters. Yeah, 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 exactly. So um, <laughs> I think those are three of the strongest juniors we have here in the female uh, UK 
Pepe or Judas playing to me. So well done, those three. Lovely, they yeah. will win a Fantastic space. Fantastic chess play today. Really, really good. Um, lovely tournament, Lauren, I have to say. That was really nice to commentate on as well. Yeah, thanks for joining me. Um, so I'm just, if you just give me a second, I'm just going to write yes. Alicia. Who is it? Alicia, um, yeah. Ellis, Denali, and Rakhine. And Cassie did a nice game, didn't she? She was. She yeah, I might put Cassie in as well, actually, if she wants to play. Yes. Because um, uh, fundraiser tournament. So I've just got a little spreadsheet of. Yeah. Um, you just put so the tournament, the, the, the simultaneous, by the way, on the 26th of February is going to be 30 girls maximum. So Harriet and Susan will play 15 each. Um, right. I'm sort of divvy yeah. up basically. And um, I've already got six girls who are my wild cards, and there were various ways that, that girls can qualify for it. Um, three of them being from here, I might actually pick a couple of other girls who participated today, yeah, um, and did quite well. If I just give me a moment to look around the scores because we didn't look down the bottom, too yes, much, but there were a lot of girls who played and um it Might was great to see so many girls golden, in the play. golden inspired phoenix i don't know who all these people are i know who quite a few of them are but i don't know who all are okay uh, um, let me just just have a quick look and see yeah. uh because i know i obviously know who these girls are so yes. i have to just um yes so so golden inspired phoenix now that's a good performance because she's only eight. Oh wow she got she has she's a rating got four out of seven. she's got more than 50 percent at eight years old yeah who does she be should be yeah i mean she only lost to like 2200s basically so okay so i think actually she is already one of my wild carders okay so i've already got her in my list fine um so also auburn climber um yes. she was by the way uh emily was one of the was the only person attached to draw of uh the 2004 Women's World Champion Antoinette Stefanova when we oh, did a simple back in, in yes. May. Yes. And uh, Stefanova was very complimentary about it and said she, she defended very well in the sort of slightly worse middle game position. So, yeah, we see we have a lot of potential female talent here uh, in the UK, Excellent. which is good. Lindsay also LP chess, uh, four out of seven as well. Uh, as did Sham Shank. So she also did quite well yesterday in the London Juniors. So she got four points too. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. And okay, and then and if we just go back a little down because you know sometimes the Natasha, you know the younger ones who who stuck their deck out to play in a tough tournament like this. Yeah, um, so I'm just trying to have a quick look to see whether any goes. Yeah, there's a seven year old who did quite well. She got three. Wow. Um, Anna got three. Yeah, these are good scores because three out of seven in this tournament. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of good players in this tournament. Lots of good players. Yeah. And Dizzy um, back. We saw a good game there. Uh, which one? Dizzy Abak. Oh yeah, Dizzy Abak. Yeah, yeah, he. Uh, yeah, Damon did well. Yeah. He's only seven, I think we said as well. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. All right. So, um, good games, everybody, and um, thank you all very much for watching the stream. Anything you want to say uh, to people, Lauren? Yeah. Well, just thank you because we we broke last year's record of sixty five. We got sixty nine today, which was absolutely brilliant. And thank you everyone for supporting because all the donations have said go to She Pays to Win and all the events uh, that I mentioned and I've got other events in the pipeline too. Um, and yeah, to just have a happy new year. I think yes. I will pick Natasha a couple of, so I've added to the Simul for 26th of February. I put Alicia, Ellis and Rakaya. Lovely. Uh, and I'll probably Cassie as well because she was the next one. But there might be a couple of other girls that I might um, ask because they've, they've played today and and won a couple of games. And I, I think what we like is participation, don't we? We like mm. that. Thanks, especially Golden their play. Phoenix. Thank you so much. So well done, everybody. And our winner, so what, what, what final word is we have a three-way tie. So how am I going to divvy up the, the £100 prize? <laughs> That's up to you, won. Lauren. You know you need to. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but but oh, actually, we should also thank... Um, Thank very much also the title players, so Plaskett, um, Atom Rod, and the two WM players as well, and everybody who joined at short notice as well um, this morning, um, and the people who are joined earlier, of course. And thanks for people commenting in the chat as well. Yeah. So have a happy new year, everyone. Thank you, Natasha, for joining happy me. Year. And, yeah, we'll do it uh, next year. Thanks, so... Lauren, and we'll do it next year as well. Yeah. Okay. So you up, Natasha, ready for it? very much for watching. <laughs>